Um, next up, we have a panel speaking about building Aeon's ecosystem. I'd like to call up Patrick Mandic, Matthew Glaud, Yakin Pravdal, Aiden Hyman, Hamid Akbari, Matthew Wilson, and Dr. Jiang Wang. Hi guys, my name is Patrick Bendig. I'm uh, heading enterprise delivery for Aeon. And uh, today we have a panel, PAC panel, by the way, six people, where we're gonna talk about the importance of uh, creating an ecosystem and uh, in particular of growing the, the Aeon ecosystem. If you think, if you think about it, um, the, the people working for Aeon from inside uh, of Aeon is just the tip of the iceberg of all the people that are working. And, uh, we see the, the representation here. Luckily, the stage wasn't big enough to add another, uh, another uh, panelist, so we, we capped it at six. So thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks for, for being here today. Um, we have, um, you know, I have a lot of uh, questions that I'm very curious to, to find the answers to. And uh, in not a lot of time, so we're gonna just jump into it. Um, the first thing I'm gonna ask you guys is to do a bit of an introduction of yourselves and the type of work you're doing for, for Aon or as part of Aon. So maybe we'll start with you, Matt. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Sergload, the CEO and president of Northern Block. So Northern Block is a, a product development shop uh, specifically for enterprise blockchain solutions. So we build dApps for governments, banks, larger, you know, larger businesses on top of uh, different blockchains and uh, on top of Aon as well. Hi, my name is Yakin Prabdiel. Um, I'm the managing partner of a rather disruptive uh, management consultants practice called the Fifth Nine. Um, our interest in blockchain is very simple. We focus on telecommunications. So we are interested in understanding the implications and demystifying blockchain for these telcos. And we've been using the Aon partnership model and representing them, them representing us um, in Europe and in, the, and in Africa. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Jian Wang. I'm a co-founder of a, a project called Matrix One. Uh, Matrix One, the first stage of it is an asset management platform. Uh, which include uh, risk management system, robot advisor, ranking system, reporting, and so on. Um, what we can do for Aon is uh, we have a family of uh, uh, cryptocurrency indices called BB index. And we can create uh, a set of indices that, uh, for tokens on Aon network. So those indices can measure the performance of uh, Aon network. And uh, more important, uh, those indices are, investment, are investable. So we create an investment vehicle for public to invest in Aon ecosystem. And uh, the final stage of uh, this matrix one is, uh, is to use uh, Aon's cost chain technology and the smart contract uh, to create uh, a decentralized uh, version of uh, uh, investment asset and, uh, to, uh, and uh, indices, uh, so that uh, the trust for financial asset is based on the open source code, blockchain technology, and the smart contract. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hamid Akbari. Uh, I'm really an entrepreneur. I built my first product and my first venture when I was 21. In the past five years, I was 100% focused on mobility and building apps for the future of mobility. And mobility is going through some significant paradigm shift. For the next five years, I'm focused on building a decentralized mobility platform, Velocia, to, so that the mobility become frictionless. And for the vision we had, we need interoperability. And that's the kind of problem Ayan solves. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just thanks to Ayan for having me here. It's a real pleasure to be here for the first conference. 
so my name is Matthew Wilson. I'm the CEO of Centris. Centris is a team of 20 engineers from diverse, diverse backgrounds, as well as a couple finance guys that are uh, riding on their coattails. And uh, we have offices, our head office is here in Toronto with two different offices in Romania. We, uh, we have 20 years of experience in implementation for Fortune 500s as well as startups, uh, ranging for a diverse range of technologies. And uh, our finance guys bring 20 years of experience in venture capital, both investing and on the operational side. We kind of use this diverse range of expertise to work, design, implement, and integrate solutions for both small companies and large companies alike. Where we see ourselves with the AM platform is working very closely with them in terms of our Romanian team helping develop as much as we can for the core infrastructure that they have, but also using our range of expertise to kind of bring different businesses and in the mainstream and in, you know, and in enterprise to just uh, grow the ecosystem as best we can. Thanks. Hello, <clears throat> and thank you. Thank you also for having me. My name is uh, Aiden Hyman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Chainsafe Systems. Um, at Chainsafe, we're a dev shop based here in Toronto, and most of our work is in implementing um, bespoke uh, blockchains for companies and then bridging those projects to the mainnet. Um, because of that, our interest with Aon is in collaborating and looking to take the bridging infrastructure to the next level and really make sure that uh, in terms of implementing these things on the ground, um, things make sense for clients and for the actual ecosystem. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to be here and really excited to be collaborating on the future of bridges in blockchain technology. All right, thank you guys. Uh, lots of uh, diverse backgrounds, lots of uh, diverse uh, directions as part of the ecosystem. Um, I always like to start these things by kind of defining what's the topic to, for discussion before we jump into it. Um, so if you think about the, the word ecosystem and ecosystem in the context of Aon, what, uh, how, how would you define that? Uh, maybe, Yakin, do you want to? So our version of ecosystem in the Aon context is a language. Um, and the best way to describe this is we have developers out in South Africa who were Ethereum-based, and they were chipped with the solidity thinking. They came over to Toronto. Patrick uh, rechipped them to the language of, of Aeon. The ecosystem that we find ourselves involved with is not just one that is of a, of a nascent technology now, but that is sustainable, it's interoperable. It seems to have itself better rooted in our world, which is in the enterprise technology space. And so for us, that is a sign of strength in that ecosystem. Anyone else wants to add anything? <laughs> so when we talk about ecosystem, we go back to really the, the, the roots of the, the term, which is biology and evolutionary theory, really a community of a living organism. And in that sense, for me, Ion itself is a living organism, and also Matt himself described it that way uh, when, uh, you know, like of launching the mainnet. So in that living organism, we're going to have network, like in any ecosystem in biology as well in the sense that there are interactions that network within the living organism itself, which is ion, and between, interaction between the players over there as well. Like for example, Velocia, which is gonna be like a decentralized mobility platform is one of them, and there we, we're gonna see lots of interaction between dApps down the road, the future Lyft and the future Uber interacting, and the future Zipcar and future bike sharing interacting so that they offer a seamless, experience to the end users. But again, if you go back to the ecosystem, the key is interaction, and those living organisms, as a result of the interaction, they're growing together and building like value for, for other players. So it's really about the community and about the interaction and enabling those interaction. So that, again, I'll go back to the evolutionary theory so that all those living organisms grow. And market, in a way, is gonna be a force that like selection power of market is going to be a force that ensures the organism who thrive create real value out there. Okay, uh, you're the young blockchain uh, ecosystem has uh, miners, developers, investors, and uh, users. 
uh, for example, AI network, uh, see if the network uh, now is on, on live last week, it's very powerful. So a good network will attract uh, more developers. So if there's more D app on the network, uh, we will have uh, uh, more users. And so the network, the investors see more value on the network, they invest, and also the miners. So what we bring is a uh, biometric one, as I said, it's uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, create a investment vehicle to the public to invest in AI ecosystem. So we, we bring investors to the system. The more, invest, the more investor, the more valuable for the network. Great, thanks. Um, I think we, we got to a good, uh, good spot uh, in terms of defining the ecosystem. I thought th those were really good responses. Um, but now the question is, why, why Aeon? What did you guys choose Aeon? I mean, like blockchain, there's so many different options, right? So why specifically Aeon? Yeah, so I, I think just to look back at traditional networks, and if we're just talking about the internet or internet of content, like we say, uh, an ecosystem or a network is just as powerful as the number of people participating and creating value into that network, right? If we're talking about blockchains as being a network of value, what's interesting now is it's still the same principle. The more participants you have in this, the more network value it's going to create. So the larger the ecosystem, the more value is in this network. What is very interesting about Aeon is the, this bridging possibility, right? So now, not only are you able to move value around the network, but we can now move value around Aeon networks and even between other types of networks. So it really unlocks a lot of value that was not possible in the past to be able to move you know, something that has tangible value attributed to it from party to party. So there are tons and tons of new business models and opportunities that are going to be able to get unlocked through just the possibility of opening up bridges between different networks. Yeah. Uh, I think that just to, even back to the blockchain ecosystem, I mean, that word gets thrown around and term gets thrown around a lot. And I mean, within the blockchain ecosystem is a series of kind of small ecosystems. So I mean, even in biology, you have a pond, a lake, and an ocean. And so right now you kind of have, you know, you have FX and you have crypto, and then you have, you know, product development tools. Um, what Aeon allows is for it to go from pond to lake to ocean because it, you have to have interaction of a series of ecosystems from that small to medium to large. And so that was what drew us for sure into it and made it a very applicable to mainstream adoption. Yeah, I mean, just to echo everyone's thoughts um, on the subject, uh, you know, when looking at blockchain right now, the idea of scalability is something that everyone loves bringing up as a way to kind of talk about the shortcomings of blockchain. Um, but no one really focuses on projects like Aeon in a sense that have been working at making that uh, a problem of the past. Um, the idea of bridging and the, the ability to have blockchains communicating with one another um, in a way that is programmatically valid um, and without question is the future. Um, and so to be here talking about these things, I mean, that's what drew us to Aeon. That's why we want to be collaborating with Aeon, because it's that team that's looking to make um, yeah, that a problem of the past. Um, and so when, when talking about scalability, there's so many solutions. Um, but it all comes down to a bridge being the first step. And so you know, here we are building that future. Um, and so that's why Aeon. Anyone wants uh, to add anything else? Anyone else? Yes, yes, yeah. let, me, let me. So thanks for the question, Patrick. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important one. I would like to unpack your question really to two components. First, what is the pain point or problem that Aon or a similar protocol layer could solve? And the second, why Aon specifically and not other potential provider out there? Let me start with the first one, the pain point or problem we're solving, because at the end, it's all about solving something specific and creating you know, like creating value. So I'm gonna speak about like our specific needs for Velocia. So Velocia is, a, is gonna be an, like kind of like a frictionless mobility platform. Imagine we're gonna be like future of, you know, Ubers and Lyft is centralized by lots of entrepreneurs. For that, it's gonna be key to have interoperability. And let me tell you why. So 
number one, imagine entrepreneur down the road wants to build apps in Bogota, in New York, in Toronto, in Beijing, in New Delhi, in Singapore, in different locations. And in mobility ecosystem, I can tell you like straight, like each year more than 100 ride sharing and car sharing and bike sharing companies like emerge in different city. Really the city is the, 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 the playing field because it's very simple because the critical mass, your network in Toronto does not necessarily translate to Beijing. If you're operating in Toronto, you need to have a critical mass of people in Toronto. If you're operating in Beijing, you need to have a critical mass of people in Beijing. So by definition, it means that the network effect happened at the level of city and not global for many reasons, including the one I explained. Now, if you have all these networks in different locations, you need interoperability to have kind of a network of networks to benefit from greater economy scale. And that interoperability problem hasn't been solved fully. So that's one of the greatest contribution of Aon because Aon is about solving interoperability among networks and platforms like us will need that for sure. Uh, the second reason is that we're building, a, we're building new communities and no one wants to build it alone because there are so many things to build. We're gonna keep working hard the next five to 10 years, but there's just so much to build. We need to build on top of each other to like, like have that great impact faster. Now, with that, we need to connect to other chains. Like in Velocia, we're gonna need payment. We, not only we have tokens, but we need stable payments, and we're looking partners there, and we already have selected one. We need file storage, we need you know, identity, like things like Bloom, and when, when you think about that, you have all these different chains and networks, you need to be able to connect to them, and they need to be connected to us so that we create the, the perfect value for the ultimate end user out there. And again, that level of interoperability that Aon offers solves those specific problems. Now, you're one of them. I guess there are going to be many more. Now, the second part of the question is what I buy Aon. Like, how many options do we have there and which one to pick? Obviously, like blockchain has significant, and crypto has significant uh, potential down the road and significant capacity to, you know, incentivize motivation. Now, what kind of groups or teams are the right one. For me, it's about number one, the vision. Like we work with a company, we work with a community, we work with a foundation that they have the right vision and we align with them on the vision. I think Matt as well as the Aon team have an amazing vision. That's one that should happen. And the second is about the team. Like again, we're too early to see what's gonna happen 10 years down the road, but it's all about the team that builds it. And Ayan, for me, has the right team in the sense that they are smart, but also they're hardworking, and they're collaborative, and they truly want to empower the community, and that matters. And the third thing is that it's gonna be about delivery. It's, it's a team that has already a track record of delivery, and they're working hard to like, have versions after versions, so it gives us peace of mind that we're not gonna get, get stuck six months, a year down the road with like, like, like a technology that is not out there. So not only we can fully collaborate to make sure everything is there, but also there's a track record that proves that the technology is gonna be delivered milestone by milestone. And that's at least on my side, the reasons why Aon. Mm -hmm. So one interesting thing about the ecosystems is that uh, when some part of the ecosystem does well, the, the other gets, tends to get dragged into that direction, right? So without like actively uh, doing anything in that favor, right? Now, my question is, do you guys, are you planning on doing any actual active efforts to collaborate within each other um, or with other partners that are currently not uh, here in the, in, the round, in, the, in the panel? Go ahead. So uh, Matthew and I were just actually talking about that earlier today. I think that the, the benefit for everyone here, I mean, if, if uh, we, Think about what Matt said this morning, where you're reshaping the internet, and you're, you're, you're creating the centralized network as you thought the internet should be at the beginning. I mean, if you think about kind of the proxy, HTTP, which is kind of responsible for modern data communication, we want Aon to be that HTTP, and we want it to essentially say, okay, there's no education needed, there's no thought process, it's just you, you develop on that, you, that's what your website does. And so, for us, it's a win-win situation for everyone, such that to collaborate is always going to make sure that we can get the same message out there and, and how to deliver it is something we need to figure out together as people who are developing on this system. And so I think that the 
the benefit is certainly to, to do that together rather than, than fight, and that's kind of the reason, because there is this reshaping happening. I think you said it perfectly. Uh, uh, there's definitely value for people building on top of Aon to collaborate together. I mean, there's a ton of knowledge and best practices and how to write smart contracts and, you know, a ton of stuff that could be shared between each other. And it, it's not competitive at the end of the day because if any of these gentlemen are successful and build awesome products, anyone else that is on that network is going to, you know, feel the positive vibes coming from that and ev everyone is successful, right? So I think there's definitely value in collaboration and that really aligns with the whole mentality around the blockchain community, that it's, it's open sourced, everyone is trying to help each other. If any of these guys are successful, it's going to make me more successful. I think at the same time, there is value in partners and people building dApps and solutions on top of Aon to collaborate with Aon directly, with you know, the actual protocol and the team. Um, we've been very fortunate uh, to be close to them. We actually <laughs> share office space uh, with, uh, with the Aon team, and it, it's given us a, a great edge because we, you know, you get that quick feedback loop. So if we're building solutions on top of it and our customers are maybe missing something or we think something could be different, then we're able just to go right away and collaborate with these guys and, hey, maybe we should make some enhancements to this or to that that will, in result, make the life better for, for the end customers and reduce friction in, uh, in their experiences. So I definitely think it's, uh, it's more of collaborating together and then collaborating you know, vertically with the actual protocol is going to make everyone successful. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to echo both of their thoughts, um, you know, this is a, an open source collaborative space, and it really has been since the beginning. Um, you know, the first time that I ever played with a private blockchain was at a hackathon that Nuco um, sponsored. And so, you know, it's those moments of people giving to the community and then kind of afterwards reaching out back to that community and saying, okay, where did those seeds get planted and where did they go and how can we work together um, to really build out that ecosystem? Um, and so, I mean, for us, collaboration is the only way to make any of this make sense at the end of the day. Um, so it's a, such a pleasure to, yeah, to have those relationships for such a long period of time and to just keep on building on, on them with new people that you meet along the way. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, in your opinion, what are kind of the, the main buckets or, or the salient points that we need to crack to, uh, to be successful, right? So we talked a lot about, you know, the success of the ecosystem, but where are those like two, three points that uh, you think are, are vital for, for success? I could take a quick stab, I, I think on the building dApps or applications on top of it, even at the, the protocol level, I think a lot of projects um, don't have a good sense of what it takes to actually operationalize a, a project. A, lo a lot of people, and you see a lot of these through the ICOs and everything, that people are going to build a solution that is totally going to disrupt an industry or take over the world in whatever way they think it'll take over the world. It takes a lot to actually get customers and get customers to use your product. You know, and that is definitely the most important thing uh, when you're building a product and trying to, you know, grow an ecosystem altogether is you need users that are going to be using this. So you need to make sure that, you know, what you're building is directed to these users that you're building it for. And this is true for any blockchain application or blockchain technology. It's true for any product really you're building. So I think it's, it's really the toughest thing is, you know, it's tough to change people's behaviors to make them use something new. Um, so the biggest challenge, you know, I think for everyone is really getting customers that are going to use your product and uh, that is going to allow you to refine the product and then grow it. From our world, what I noticed in a lot of the blockchain space is it's a bottom-up approach. A lot of people start off with blockchain thinking, well, let's code, let's build something cool, <coughs> build it and they will come. <coughs> in our world, it's a top-down approach. People come to us with a business problem. They want to understand and articulate a pain that they have in their ecosystem that is either caused by friction or cost modeling or even being able to not reach into an untapped market space. Blockchain is one of those instruments for us which, if used responsibly, can demystify that fear. 
And that's what I think is very important in this space, that if we start to get to the next level of starting to demystify and understand that this is an instrument that can be used responsibly, that people can start to treat this as, as a utility, as a basic commodity of existing technologies that can be, if used properly, can do something really, really great. Yeah, I think just uh, building on that, for sure you've got the demystification of blockchain is for sure something that's very important. Um, so maybe one thing we could do, you know, it, it kind of ties together with education, but some lightweight technology solutions where it's kind of a service fits all sort of thing so that you can have mainstream adoption of this platform. Because in a global trust network, if there's only a few people that are on that network, then it doesn't really, it doesn't really fly, right? So maybe some just simpler technologies kind of just as we kind of look to uh, kind of as the evolution of the internet happened in the 90s and 2000s. I think to make a network su successful is uh, the fundamental is uh, the most important thing. Uh, for example, Aeon uh, is linked to the core team. If the core team can de continue to develop a good product, say Aeon is the fast, more scalable, and more robust than other network, then the uh, developers will come to develop good D apps. And uh, of course, we will have more users. Then so all the good stuff come naturally. So blockchain is a fundamental technology that has massive potential. But let's not forget, as a technology, it's at the end of the day, it's a tool to solve certain problems or create certain types of value. So for me, what the key is to make sure we have domain expertise, we're very close to the problem, and we really use blockchain, you know, very unique aspects of blockchain to solve those problems. So for example, if there's an industry, there's, an, there's a play where further disintermediation, disintermediation create fundamental economic value, like that could create a significant wave of innovation and market success. If, like, we just use blockchain as a tool, it might not be as successful. So as long as like we know what kind of problem we're solving and we're very close for, with it for we're close we are very close to it and like fundamentals of blockchain fit there i think one way or another we're going to be successful okay. um i have a question i'm very curious about uh, your thoughts on this one and maybe the you know you don't have an answer for it but uh um if you were to pick a firm or um, you know, maybe it's a corporation, or maybe it's just a society of people to join the Aeon ecosystem. Who would that be? I think uh, big influencers, if you're looking in the financial space or, you know, any space really, going back to how difficult it is to you know, disrupt the sector and launch a new product, right, that people aren't used to using. I think uh, key for Aeon, and Aeon has amazing partners already, which is a, a big value add to why it makes sense to, to build on top of here too, but really having key influencers in different industries that could be part of, you know, part of conversations when you're building new products that they could potentially influence people to buy in to this new product or do pilots or do some testing. Um, so definitely centers of influences in different spaces. Do you have in mind any, um, you know, maybe industry or something that you think it's uh, probably a fast follower that uh, could get onboarded on Aeon relatively soon? Any any thoughts on that? Um, I, I won't name a name. I, I think one that m makes sense and it's a huge use case uh, for, for blockchain technologies is that it could really drastically improve processes in supply chain. And there are a lot of, a lot of companies doing this, and there are a lot of new startups popping up here, but I think it is very difficult, especially in large value chains or supply chains. If you want it to be effective, you need to have buy-in from everyone. Um, so um, that's where, you know, uh, it would be a good area, especially with the amount of value that moves through supply chains in the world, which is basically the whole world. Uh, if that's a space that uh, is interesting to go into, again, so centers of influence in that space uh, would be interesting, but. Uh, no, no names or apparent or pop-up. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any thoughts? I mean, it'd be great if Facebook went on blockchain and everyone's user data was anonymous. 
So in our particular case also, we're also looking for like stable coins so that they could replace fiat currency, so payment, and like, like protocols like that, file storage, communication for sure. Like those are the kind of things that by joining the community will create value for the entire ecosystem. Okay. So I think we are uh, running out of uh, time. Um, and I did want to get some uh, questions from, from the audience. Um, if you have some. Um, while we get speak, um, microphone set up, I wanted to ask one last question. Um, and, um, and, and the question is around, what would you advise, um, you know, someone who's considering Aeon as a platform uh, now that you're in the position you're in? You mean in terms of uh, how you would what, what would you tell AI? that person, right? So you made a decision on day zero. Then from day zero, there was you know, some experiences that could have been really good or, or bad or a mix, right? And then you made a decision to stay in the ecosystem. Uh, with that background, what, what would you advise uh, um, someone who's considering joining? I think, uh, I, think I would use uh, a bit of a... You know, I would use my background, which is more in finance, and, and sort of explain to to stick with the Aon ecosystem, and kind of imagine if you were building a if you were building a business in a single city, what your potential marketplace would be, and then saying, well, what Aon does is it is able to connect cities such that now you have communication in a larger market, and so in, in the blockchain ecosystem, you're now able to think about a global community in the context of blockchain, and. So my advice would be to, to learn as much as you can about it and understand the benefits of that because to, to us at Centris, that's that is, this is the mainstream application that everyone's kind of been waiting for. Okay. Yeah, I completely, uh, I completely agree. Um, it really comes down to, you know, how they're looking to implement Aon because Aon is very, um, you know, it's a very large ecosystem in the sense that there are so many things you can really do with it. Um, so it's really, you know, for the, the users, the people that you are trying to build out something for, um, that almost decide for you how you're going to implement it. Um, because whether or not, you know, you need a bridge or something like that, I mean, there's still space in Aeon for um, that type of a project. Um, so I would just say, you know, know what it is you're looking for. Um, because there's just so much you can do with, with Aon um, that it, you need to, yeah, you just need to be informed. Um, but, you know, I would kind of focus on, on the team that is there. Um, and they're, they're more, of the, more serious people in the space right now in Toronto. Um, they're always available there. Um, and, you know, you can, you can find them there 24-7. Um, and so I would, I would really focus on the team because in technology, you know, those are the people that are going to be answering your calls or going to be taking care of the things that make your products work. Um, so really, you know, betting on the team and the technology is usually um, the right idea. Okay, thanks, guys. So uh, I think there's some microphones circulating uh, around for anyone who has a question for our panelists. Um, can't see much from here. I see that there's someone there. Hi, guys. Um, I see that you are Aeon lovers, and uh, you really enjoy working with Aeon and for Aeon. Um, I'd like to ask you, uh, which are two main key things um, things that you have to have in order to develop under Aeon. Tell me, uh, tell us, what are the two things that you have in mind that help a lot building devs or building th under Aeon uh, blockchain? Well, I mean, any, any type of permission database in which, you know, there's stakeholders at play that don't necessarily want all information on that database to be accessible by everyone who has access to that database. Um, so I mean, it's really anything that requires a database that has permissions to it. 
Um, so there's a lot of technology that requires that type of a, of a database. Um, so yeah, lots of things. Because you know, at the end of the day, this is about making your, your data smart, in a sense, um, and giving it kind of life outside of that, um, out of that specific structure, and then also allowing specific people to access it. So it's really about taking what you have right now and taking it to the next level, in a sense, of how people are able to um, interact with it, and then also um, build on top of it in a way that protects your users. Any other questions from the audience? I have one. So is, is Aon like gas for Aon? You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, I remember uh, hearing that, that WANcoin is basically WAN chains gas. So is that the same deal with, with Aon? You follow what I mean? So I mean so there's more to Aon than than just, you know, the, the main net as well. There's there's lots of things um, within the Aon ecosystem that you can use as a developer. Um, so there are things that do require, you know, um, permissioned rights to a blockchain and in which there is potential incentives depending on the, the miners, but there's more to it than, than just a standard mainnet blockchain. Um, and so I think that, that it, it depends. But would you say that it, it's kind of like that? I mean, could, I mean it, it depends on the situation because not all interactions with the Aon blockchain necessarily are happening on the mainnet. Um, so it depends. Uh, as I know, that there is no Aon gas. Aon is uh, similar like Ethereum. So the Ether can be the, the currency and can be the gas on the system. So it's not, not like Neo. Neo has Neo and the gas. Right? Aon is, uh, is uh, similar to Ethereum, as I know. Yeah, OK. Thanks. Okay, we'll take one more question if there is, and otherwise we'll, we'll close. Yeah, go ahead. Hey guys, thanks all for, uh, for speaking today. Question I have is about uh, interoperability from a opportunity to collaborate with the public sector. So there's a lot of private sector, and I know, you know some of the ethos of blockchain is kind of uh, disrupting a lot of the, the bigger middlemen and disrupting a lot of that, that aspect of it. So Bank of Canada has launched Project Jasper. They've worked a lot with TMX. There's been a lot of the enterprise side and, and the public and, and private and how those sort of interact. What's the opportunity to sort of build the backbone of a country's commercial system? So these last mile systems that go directly to the client or directly to the consumer sort of have an opportunity to plug directly into uh, to kind of a blockchainized version of the existing payment rails. What's kind of the opportunity for interoperability there? So I can speak from experience that we've been investigating um, a public sector blockchain ecosystem in South Africa, which is completely heterogeneous in its nature, simply because you've got legacy platforms, you've got multiple building systems, and you've got a whole load of social attitudes which cannot be changed within this generation. We see platforms like Aon as, I actually don't see them like HTTP, I see them as TCP IP. For us, it's an infrastructure. We should be considering it as the same air and water we breathe. So as far as an infrastructure is concerned, having a common basic language of principle will allow those social uh, use cases, dApps in our world, to start to evolve. And as long as the, the, the nature of the game isn't, it's my blockchain, and I can build an entire vertical stack on it, but rather, who is willing to talk to my blockchain? And that, I think that's, that's one of the things Aeons has got right, is that they are, they are very open to adapt, adaptability of getting other people like Cardano Project and others to interact with theirs. Because for us, we find that um, 
whether it's a smart city, which is an extension of a, of a, a, a social project, whether it's the socioeconomics of a country that's down south, they all have the same heterogeneous needs. And you cannot solve it with a single blockchain. And, and I think we've got to realize that. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, and thanks guys for being here today, and thanks so much for all the work that you're doing as part of the ecosystem. Uh, you know, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you.